thing I wanted to mention was this story regarding Lil Wayne turning pro for this skateboard company called Thank You. And it's been all over the place. I wanted to quickly just touch upon this because, you know, it kind of did tickle me a little bit, see some of the response out there. And I want to share some of my story about how difficult it was being in the skateboarding community industry, whatever it may be here in the UK growing up back in the day, being a boy from ends, black boy, an actual black boy. This week, it was just announced that Lil Wayne is now pro for Thank You Skateboards. How y'all doing? Spanish Mike released a video of Tori and Thank You Co surprising Lil Wayne with his pro board. The video was very wholesome and a nice celebration of Lil Wayne's connection to skateboarding, but it does beg the question, is he now a professional skateboarder? I think it's also worth noting that this was a surprise for Wayne and he wasn't involved in the decision. Surprise me by letting me know today. Before we express any opinions, I think we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be a professional skater. The definition of professional that. makes some money because of signature skate deck product. Now in 2023, it's pretty easy to get your own skateboards made. So pretty much anyone can start a company and turn anyone pro, right? Well, that is the fun gray area that we get to live in. Shane O'Neill shares his thoughts about this on his nine club when he's turning Uto pro. That was my concern when we started the company. It's like, I don't know how this is company's gonna go. Plus I'm turning him pro. I know I'm a pro skater and stuff, but I'm not like self-centered to the fact that I think my company's a real thing. You know, it's like mm. I'm turning someone pro. Right. I'm really, is that it's illegal? It's a big deal. Is that illegal? <laughs> There's no union. I just right, started right. a company myself as a pro skater right. and made him pro. Like, is that cool or no? I don't know. But now let's explore some other celebrities. Johnny Knoxville's name is on a skateboard and he has only skated two times in his life. And I'm going to drop in on the vert ramp for the first time ever. But what about Steve-O? He's been on and off skating for 30 years, and he legitimately can do some hard tricks. But just because he releases his own board with his own company, is he a pro or is it just merchandise? Danny Duncan is also interesting. He's been a skateboarder his whole life and is pretty good. But is he pro? Is he a pro snowboarder too? I think there's this ambiguous bar set for the amount of skill that someone must have before we view them as a professional skateboarder, and some expectations to be involved in the skate industry and skate community. What it seems like to me is if you ask Lil Wayne straight up if he thinks he's a pro skater, he's going to tell you of course he doesn't, but he's hyped and honored to be recognized by the skateboarding world. Regardless of how you phrase it, I still think this is super sick and great for skating and I love to see Lil Wayne's energy and approach being so pure that he really does in fact love skating. I've experienced a lot of great feelings yeah okay i don't know if there's a feeling that come close to landing on them four wheels, four wheels bro. right yeah. yeah let me know in the comments is so yeah so big up little wayne for turning pro i'm all for it i really am i've been all for it ever since he started skateboarding with all this you know truck fit stuff he was doing even though he only had like four tricks under his belt that he could do and he was just repeating them again and again what you saw in his face when he was skating was somebody that clearly had found a passion, a hobby outside of hip hop, outside of rapping, outside of being involved in that whole scene, that whole community that he's obviously committed his whole life to, that gave him some level of joy, that brought him some level of solace. Now, this could be something to tie with the fact that he was maybe on, you know, doing whatever he was doing back then that maybe you know it was a welcome distraction but you did generally see that kind of amazement that wonder and that kind of just joy that skateboarding can bring to a lot of people and i thought you know same to myself you know growing up in a really rough neighborhood that sort of sense of escapism of being able to jump on your deck and just be able to just roll out um you know and kind of clear your mind and go somewhere you know like a car park and just spend hours and hours trying to perfect your kick flips or trying to land a kick flip let alone you know a hill flip or something like that um, those things were really something that i kind of resonate to when i kind of first got into skateboarding and my routine to skateboarding was a bit weird a bit unconventional i think i started off skating when i was maybe like 15 or something or 14 and most of it was based upon this kind of this show that used to happen on tv back in the day i forgot the name of it but it was basically this show where they took these five kids on a bus around your uk and go up to skate and then they basically, I think at the end of it, you basically get to turn amateur or pro, I think, or something along those kind of lines. And you had to send a video of yourself skating to get involved. It was sick, man. It was like a kind of real, it was a kind of, not real world, but it was sort of like a reality TV show where they had all these kids on a bus going around the UK living their lives. And for someone like myself, who was really young at that time and definitely wasn't allowed out that much and wasn't allowed out to go on a bus with other people, you know, traveling the world, it was sort of like a weird 
things that kind of witness kids my age doing like raw man they're out there having fun you know frolicking and doing the whole skateboarding lifestyle thing and i always loved that and then of course came the x games and then of course came stuff like um what else is oh obviously streetwear that was obviously another big thing that kind of got me to skateboarding but one of the things i remember realizing when i got into skateboarding because i came with it i came into it really naive really kind of bushy-eyed and sort of just like hopeful oh my god it's an amazing thing i discovered and then i kind of realized all the little intricacies and politics and you know seeing things that will turn most people off and i guess they they're inbuilt there on purpose to essentially keep the people who aren't really about it out which is good because there is a lot of kind of self-policing um there's a lot of gatekeeping involved in skateboarding that, like I said, is a good thing because I don't think it's it could survive this long and not be lame and not go out sad like how rollerblading and all these other things have gone out and maybe even BMXing because of how much um, people care about it and they do their best, especially at the core level. And then I guess that kind of has reverse, what's that word? How do you say that word? Re versions um, especially at the core level and obviously that, that has effects that kind of are felt on the you know on the bigger scale when it comes to those sort of things but one thing that i didn't like and i've I got stressed so i didn't like it all was this really pompous and sort of like snotty attitude a lot of skateboarding people had back in the day especially when i was coming up when i used to go to that old slam city skate store in new street covent garden if you know you know and a lot of those guys in there were really like up, you know, they'd really kind of point their nose in the sky at the thought of them ever kind of becoming pally pally or having any relationship to things like, you know, fashion or sneaker culture at the time. There was even certain shops that would go out of their way. I remember Slam did have the thing, sort of, sort of thing, which I felt was a little bit... um degrading in a way where they'd have this thing where, oh, if you wanted to buy a pair of Dunks, the SBs, they'd make you do a kickflip or like a competition thing either i think it was a discount oh no sorry not discount i think yeah i think it was a discount or maybe you got them free i don't know like if you can land a trick or something they'd give you a certain discount off a shoe which i always thought was really demeaning in that regard but then i also remember times when i was working for hypebeast back in the day doing some editing sort of some do some post contribution where you just basically write up the post that you see on there and you get paid like a flat rate i used to do that back in the day when you know hypebeast first started and i remember i was kind of putting together a story about like street style or something and i think i popped into slam one day to ask them oh if you want to be involved in this thing and the way i got laughed out of that store was hilarious like the way that they kind of like scoffed at the name they scoffed at what i was trying to do and everything and this was me also being part of that scene for a while like i've gone i got i went there to kind of watch various skate videos get get screened downstairs when that was open i went there to see certain people that were signing certain decks and whatnot teams that came through i was a part of that whole little you know um wider community that kind of surrounded sam city skate so they were kind of familiar with me and who i was or oh, not familiar really but they were familiar with my face not who i was because i didn't speak anything um but when i went in there and they kind of scoffed and sort of like you know basically laughed me out of the building it was pretty disheartening don't get me wrong and also it's a reminder of just how you know up their own ass these skateboarding skate guys can be and then you know other brands out there you know that kind of had a really i don't know how do you describe it like a kind of annoying cosplaying larping image of like working class culture and black culture and stuff and then you look at the core of the company it's just like full of well ads absolute well ads and these same well ads will kind of try and vibe you out they try and make it seem as if they're from where you're from they're not from ends at all whatever ends they're from they're not the same ends i'm that i'm from and they kind of act like they were and then there was a point in time where a lot of these guys especially the, the the core guys were very much against the whole fashion thing and then when a certain brand pops up and they start doing fashion editorials and flipping you know um adverts in vogue and stuff suddenly people start making excuses people are, are writing paragraphs of why it makes sense on like sidewalk skateboarding forum and all this sort of malarkey and making every excuse under the book and under the sun sorry. and then i realized oh it is a kind of a pick and choose thing so if you're friends with somebody if you know somebody it's all well and good but if it's somebody that kind of is you feel like is outside of your little scene it's bad and because i kind of came from it from the outside you know naturally being more of a streetwear sneaker dude from ends and i came there it wasn't kind of the same thing that they wanted they'd want somebody else from i don't know 
um, flipping Croydon or something, right? Or Loughborough, you know, or the Watford Wars area that was kind of black as well. But, you know, you know, on the border and they were involved, that would make more sense. But then when I came in, it was an issue. So those same guys that were having an issue with those sort of things, but then excuse all the flipping, you know, the Carly crosses pretending she's jumping on a fucking skateboard and all that sort of shit because it was of a particular brand, you can go and spin on my finger. Let Lil Wayne be pro. If he's pro and thank you want to make him pro, it's all well and good in my books because if you can allow Gucci collabs and you can allow all this other doco nonsense bullshit, then obviously you can allow Lil Wayne to be a, a, a pro skateboard, especially when the parameters around being pro are so loose and ambiguous. Even I didn't know yeah, that's how loose and biggest it was i just always assumed it was something that only happens when if you're with a legacy brand or something i never actually knew that you could become pro with a newer brand which kind of does throw up the idea of like how is it i think it's i think pro is probably similar to like um belts in like jujitsu because people would say oh a black belt from a certain um from a certain school it doesn't maybe hold as weight as a black belt from another school because of how hard the instructions are in terms of pushing you until you're able to get those belts and there's some people who have like lower belts or hard, but you know you know what i mean so maybe that's the same thing when it goes to skateboarding um it depends on what you know on what sort of tutelage you're under what team you roll with and what sort of malarkey but regardless um, if they want to turn in pro I'm all for it the other thing as well Lil Wayne people really underestimate just how big of a celebrity he is how big of an icon he is we have no idea the amount of people and eyes and attention he's brought to skateboarding and if skateboarding overall is going to survive what you're going to need is for regular schmecking the normie types to kind of discover especially adults in their like late 30s 40s 50s you know suddenly falling back in love with skateboarding because for me when I look back at it, the reason why I didn't, I stopped sort of skateboarding was mainly about all that political stuff on the outside. Less so about, you know, the the the, the acts or the quote unquote sport of it itself, right? Um, it was more so the other things outside of it that kind of, kind of you know, uh, soured the taste in my mouth. But once you get away from that stuff and just focus on skateboarding, it's still an amazing thing to do. It's still an amazing skill to learn. It's still an amazing hobby to pursue in any way, shape or form. So imagine the amount of people who are going to be inspired by Lil Wayne's journey and be like you know what now that I'm away from the scene now that I'm not so closely tied to it I can just enjoy it for the fun um, thing that it is and that's definitely what Lil Wayne's done so big up Lil Wayne he is pro in my book as long as um, you know he's still alive he's pro in my book